y'all want to play if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> okay. If you're happy, happy and, and you know, you know it, clap, it, clap your, your hands. hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your clap hands. Your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, then you clearly wouldn't be here. But since you're here, anyway, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap those cheeks. <laughs> The problem for today is um, from Mithy. It's uh, about sharing weird dreams that we've had before. <laughs> mm. And yeah, and we're also working on, uh, I'm working on Pura. What is Lemmy working on? Some bad stuff. Something I started in another episode that I never finished. This is looking a lot more finished from this episode to that one, though. And what are you working on, Mr. Fox? Some random crap. <laughs> wow! Great. <laughs> I am enlightened profoundly. <laughs> I understand completely what you're working on. <laughs> I'm just wondering, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I have the problem of using way too many keyboard shortcuts, and I'm sure that if you've ever seen any speed paint from me, you've noticed that I do this a lot. <laughs> it's just like zooming in and out a lot, so. I'm trying to use an express key remote instead of a keyboard so I don't zoom or pan around as much. So it, I, I'm just wondering if it also works in Clip Studio Paint because I kind of set it up for Photoshop. But I also set up all the keyboard shortcuts in Clip Studio Paint to be the same as in Photoshop. So it should work in theory, but we'll find out. Skittles will be having a rave like on his Photoshop. <laughs> I'm sharing my screen, right? Yes. Okay, good. Feel free to close it. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Is that a joke? Because I just opened it. <laughs> like, should I be closing it? I'm very confused. You, you can leave it open if you want. You can close it if you want. You can pretend I'm not even here if you want. Just let everyone else just get through this next hour. <laughs> oh, wow, you're like, get me out of here. Okay. I no, I we're like... friends. No, I love being here, but if you feel like you're being <laughs> held against your will, which they're not. <laughs> I'm blinking if anybody can't tell. Like, I can't tell. <laughs> like, you have here against your will. I'm not holding anyone here against their will. Everybody here equally wants to be here. <laughs> Right, mm. guys? <laughs> well, I'm held here against my chair. You're just like, yeah, no, I just have you here, and you're just like, well, I mean, my chair is comfy. I have snacks. I'm all good. I, mean, I was going to be in this chair anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. If I just happen to get kidnapped for entertainment purposes, then so be it. <laughs> if I get quiet, it's because I'm trying to remember my dreams. It's not working. No worries. <laughs> yeah, the prompt is from Mithy about dreams. I'm just trying to... Because um, I was already telling Fox and Lemmy about this. There is one sequential nightmare that I've had for like the last 15 years. And it's not the same one every time, but it's like the same... I want to say like the same villain <laughs> every time. And I can always tell when it's that dream and it doesn't, you know, happen back to back, but it is like once every couple of months I have that same nightmare and it's like a story in a movie that it progresses a little bit more. I won't get into that uh, story in this episode necessarily just because it's way too long. It's like 15 years worth of nightmare. <laughs> so I'm just trying to think of like uh, something else that's more manageable I could be telling in the meantime. I'm like, huh. Fun. Um, do you remember any of yours? I do, but just just before I share, like, um, I just imagine like the video goes up and the whoever's watching will look down at the timeline and it will say that the video was fifteen years long and it's like, oh my god, he actually shared it. <laughs> that crazy son bitch actually did it. <laughs> yeah, I tend to like I do remember some of my dreams. I like a lot of them I forget over time, um, unless I actually actively write them write them down. Um most of them, most of them, I tell to Mickey like within like a day or something because we have some pretty crazy dreams. Um, but there have been some where I have, I think one of the weird ones I had was like an Inception like dream where I 
I was uh, I was asleep in the dream, and I was uh, I don't know what exactly was happening. I think I was I was in this like bizarre place. Like I think it actually was a bazaar, like a marketplace. Um, oh hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you're asleep in the dream, you're asleep for real. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, and I was, you know, across the world or whatever, and and I, I was like, wow, like I should really like. At, at some point, it, I became aware that it was a dream, and I was like, I should really wake up. And uh, but I was having fun exploring, and then I I like I was like, okay, I'll wake up, and I and I woke up, and I woke up in my in my hall lying on the lying on the ground and i was very confused um and and i went to go about my my daily my daily life and stuff but then like instead of getting up properly i like rolled to the side this was like in my parents house so like i was in the upper hall and i kind of sausage rolled um across the hall and we have this like you know the this the stairs have got like a bit of a balcony Mm -hmm. Um, because it's like stairs that kind of go in on on themselves it's like does like it like goes down and then does a 180 and then goes back the other way um yeah and there's a balcony or a banister looking down the stairs and i like sausage roll through the the banister and like fall down to the bottom of the stairs and then I wake up in my bed so I woke up from a dream into a dream and then woke up for real <laughs> and I've had those kind of <laughs> dreams a couple of times where I've had a dream within a dream you ever get those anxiety dreams like where you're nervous that you'll miss something so you wake up but then you're still asleep so you wake up again but you're still asleep and then you actually wake up and by the time you wake up you're just like I've done this shit like twenty times now. I'm over it. Oh my god! It's funny you mention that because for the I I kid you not for the past three weeks I have countlessly had dreams about high school or university and that I keep missing my dissertation deadline, and it's actually feel it feels so real that like I will wake up and I'll have that like shot of adrenaline and I'll be like, Oh my God, like I've missed my deadline. I'm going to miss my deadline. Like I've still got like 8,000 words to write. <laughs> and I like straight out of bed. And for 10 minutes, I be- I'm, I'm awake, but I believe that I'm, I have my dissertation to do. And I'm like, I graduated uni two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still getting to you. You're just like, I was, I'm free. Why does this still hurt me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's interesting, though, because um, I have dreams where I'm in high school again, and I finally show up to class, and it's like the last day where it's finals and stuff, and I just hadn't gone to class all year. I don't know. I just never showed up. And they're like, okay, it's time to hand in all your work, and then I just have like a mini stroke that I just didn't do any of my work. And the thing is, like, I never cut school. I never did anything like that, but... um. I uh, was homeschooled with tutors for a portion of my life when my brother got sick. So uh, I had to do all the work on my own and the tutors were totally worthless. Like this guy came over and showed me his like webbed foot. And that was all <laughs> I remember him teaching me about science is that he had a webbed <laughs> foot. And I'm like, dude, get out of my house. And then there was a woman that just wanted to talk about her own artwork to me and show me her artwork. And then she yelled at me like, you didn't do these assignments. I'm like, I didn't know I had to. You never told me to. <laughs> I, I got lost at the webbed foot part. <laughs> yeah. So like, I, 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 I know exactly where these nightmares are coming from. It's because of that feeling of like, you didn't do all this work you were supposed to do, but like no one told me to do it or like I wasn't there. So I didn't know. And it keeps resurfacing and it it makes me so anxious when I wake up and I'm like, I'm not going to graduate high school. (laughs) A lot of my, a lot of my nightmares, I just end up turning into like story ideas. (laughs) (laughs) That's your muse. (laughs) Yeah. I'm just like, oh, that's some good, like, you know, it just freaks the shit out of me when I'm asleep. And then when I wake up, I'm like, oh, that's. That's good. Let's use that. Oh, that's some good shit. 
that's the good <laughs> shit. No, because I this was a nightmare that I had recently, um, and it was uh, pretty much it was a monster that's kind of a combination of Siren Head and the tripods from War of the Worlds. You know, nope. and I was at like this. Oh well. <laughs> Uh, uh, if I remember, I'll put a picture up on screen, and then maybe you could just, you know, use some imagination, piece the two together. I don't and, really uh, have a good imagination. Well, it's yeah. um pretty much the the way that it looks is, uh, you know, like Z you know, the aliens from Alien vs Predator. Oh uh, yeah, I never saw that, but I imagine imagine like its head attached to like three wriggly tentacles, but the thing is also like a thousand feet tall. <laughs> I don't like that. I didn't either. That's why it's a nightmare. But um, <laughs> when I, you know, pretty much what happened was I was stuck in, uh, I was actually stuck, what are they, like a, I, I keep, it's like a mall, but like a, one of those that's also outside. I like a strip mall? Yeah. Um, so I was at a mall, but the thing is, I knew that it could hear. So the thing is, if we made too much noise, even though they were outside, and the thing is, there was like a bunch of them. Um, so I knew that they could hear really well. And if we made too much noise while trying to get out of the mall, which um, I don't get why I'd want to get out of the mall. That seems like the safest place to be. <laughs> um, anyway, this mall also had like 100 floors, which was kind of stressful. Um but the thing is, the mall was all overgrown and stuff, so there was, like, you know, foliage and stuff in it, so I knew that the world had kind of gone to shit a long time ago. Point is, the, the like, giant monster thingies also had, um, they had, like, these weird, it's like a 3D projection thing that would go down, and the thing is, um, it was like a little laser that looked kind of like a, you know those 3D grids for things, like, you know, it's just a bunch of squares, and then they, like, line up on stuff, and then it shows, like, the structure of the thing? Sure. <laughs> anyway, they had, like, they had, like, 3D mapping lines around stuff, and it would be, like, completely silent, and they'd be kind of like spotlights, but the, um, they would just be moving around, but the moment they stopped in an area for, like, three to five seconds, um, that thing would explode. <laughs> so... Yeah, but the thing is, it was like ominous because it was really quiet, and then you just hear like a ding, 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 and then a thing would explode, and they were all over. So you know, you're like trying to sneak around, and they're showing up through the building everywhere. So it's kind of like the floor is lava, but it's moving. <laughs> so I kept trying to get between safe zones of like one spot and another spot. Um, and the thing is, I, the objective was to like get out of that um mall, but it was a hundred you know, floors, and I needed to go extremely slowly and be super quiet, and there was a bunch of other people with me, <laughs> so I kept seeing them die and stuff just because they, you know, either made a noise that was too loud or, you know, when the laser thing started, you can't move because, you know, it's like, oh, if you move, then they'll see you, but if you don't move and you're stuck in one of those things, then you'll just <laughs> I like explode. musical chairs with death. <laughs> Yeah. And stranger things. <laughs> but that's one of those dreams that feels real time, you know? Like you sleep for eight hours and you feel like it's eight hours long. <laughs> so by the time I woke up and I had to go to work, I was just like, I've been like dodging this stuff for hours. I'm tired. I want to go home. And that wasn't really like a jump scare kind of horror. It was like suspense horror just because it was like the thing was very close to me a handful of times and I was just like trying to dodge it and stuff and trying to get out incredibly slowly. <laughs> and it was it, just like, a pain. You dodge enemies in Resi 2. Like you just like sidestep them and all that stuff. Dude, I wish. You know how many years it took me just to build the mental confidence to fly? <laughs> like that shit takes forever. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Man. No, that's it. That's it. But it's just like, uh, it's, it, it was just a pain because it was it, it's like a real time hunting being hunted by something that you know you don't have a chance of destroying so i was like oh dang yeah no this sucks let's see i'm trying to think uh i have the same reoccurring sort of nightmare uh where i'll go to sleep and in this dream i am dating someone and it could be an ex or a friend or like a stranger. It does. It's been everyone. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm like on a date, and I'm on a date, and and whatever it goes 
well, like all of my dates do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except normally, mm-hmm. like, I don't like the people. So I'm like, ooh. So it's kind of like that sort of thing where you're like, oh, they like me. I can tell, but me. And so you're on this date, and just about like an hour or two into the date, um, because like usually it'll be like we're going to eat somewhere, and then we're gonna go do something, you know, and then just somewhere in there, I remember my husband mad, <laughs> and then I just, and then the guy's going on and on and on on this date, and I'm thinking, what ever happened to Matt? Like, where did he go? What happened to him? And then did we break up? And then I have like this feeling of impending doom that like our marriage came to an end and we actually broke up. But I'm not really sure that that happened or not. So then I'm like, I gotta go. And like, I ditch the person I'm on a date with. And they're usually like, kind of like annoyed, you know, because if they paid for dinner or something, (laughs) they're like, sorry, I have a husband to go find. You know, they don't really like that. (laughs) <laughs> and then I spend the rest of the dream searching for what happened to Matt, and I never find him. That's so sad. <laughs> I know. I wake up and I'm like, <gasps> and like I look around to be like, am I still married? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you just wake up in a cold sweat and Matt's like, love you. And you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Like you wake up and you feel panicked because you know it felt so real and then you look around and you're like oh he's right there okay we're good <laughs> i feel like this prompt would be easier for me if i ever had like more dreams because i i know that you know people have a lot more dreams than they remember but for me it feels like i only ever have a dream or something like once in a blue moon <laughs> okay. so it's like i don't cool. even dream a lot let alone nightmares <laughs> Hold up. How come every time I do sketchy stories, there's someone picking up my garbage outside? It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. There's always a truck out there. Have you noticed? He's just checking in. He likes the series. (laughs) He thinks so. He's a big fan. The guy never comes on Friday. I don't know what he's doing here. He's just like, oh, hey, I love, I I like your series, Lemmy. You and your friends do a good job. It's like, (laughs) thank you. When are you going to make merch? I'm going to buy some. (laughs) Did I be the guy that you date in your dream instead of your husband? No! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> no, uh, speaking of which, I am I am probably... Uh, yeah, like, uh, probably as soon as I'm done with this, actually, I am going to go to Redbubble and, like, make the shirts. <laughs> then I'll mail them to you guys. Yes, I will wear it every time we do sketchy stories. And You'll also just, uh, when we don't. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just be like, what the... They're like, I like your shirt. What's it from? It's just like, I have friends on the internet. We talk about our nightmares together. <laughs> <laughs> and other people listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like... Okay, I'm going to go now. (laughs) That's nice. (laughs) Just walks away slowly. And you're just like, I wonder why they always run away. (laughs) No, Fox, I'll see what I can do about getting one sent to you too. I don't know if Redbubble does international, but I'll see. (laughs) We'll find a way. (laughs) (laughs) You see, life uh, 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 finds a way. Oh, Crow was actually based off of a nightmare, like the design for Crow. I remember you saying something. Yeah. So uh, pre- pretty much what it was, I don't remember all of that dream anymore because it was like when I was 12. <laughs> but uh, pretty much I was being sh- uh, followed in. So I was in like one of the, it's not like a corn maze, but it, it you know, Ooh. it was like a Sorry. it was like a corn field. No, you're good. Oh, that's and- horrible. And no, and I remember how I got there was just because like I was on a bus. I think it was for a school trip, and then like a giant, like a bunch of giant crows, not you know giant like a thousand feet tall, but like you know six foot crows, were like using their talons and stuff and to try to rip through the top of the bus and stuff. Anyway, dude, the bus... six foot crows are giant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what crows you've been seeing, but that's huge. <laughs> Ah, oh, here in Utah, land, uh, the, the crows are like <laughs> six feet. No, that's huge. They're not giant. They're just six feet. <laughs> they're they're just chilling, and they're six feet tall. But yeah, the 
so the you know the crows like tore the roof off of the bus and stuff and they killed the driver and i was like 12 <laughs> so like we couldn't drive and a bunch of kids and stuff you know ran out of the bus and they got picked off one by one so it's like oh let's try to ditch the crows inside of this you know uh like corn it's it's not a corn maze i keep wanting to say corn maze but it's like a cornfield and you know it was like 13 foot tall stalks of corn so it's just like way higher than i could ever hope to see over well i realized you and it's, this is totally like a slender-esque vibe on this one because i even heard the music that was like bum, 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 you know <laughs> i was just like oh damn crow's following me around with a bongo drum <laughs> but um yeah i was being followed by like a hooded figure and the thing is it was like they they went from like a hooded figure that looked like a person to uh like turning into shadows and then they would like detonate into birds <laughs> but the thing is like they kept following me and i knew that oh like if they find you you die because you know that's the way that the dreams work <laughs> and i was trying to get away from them to the point where i actually set the field on fire because <laughs> i was like well i'm either gonna die because of smoke inhalation or because a giant bird person is <laughs> trying to kill me <laughs> and that's the day skittles killed all of his classmates <laughs> <laughs> no, they were already dead. I knew I was the last one. It's kind of oh. like in dodgeball. I was always the last one in dodgeball just because I was like extra as fuck and I would dodge like hell. It's just like, <laughs> like I would be the one that's like trying to slide and stuff and they'd be like, please just get out. We want to start a new game. And I'm just like, if y'all bitches want to play a new game, you'll hit me with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you thought you were Rambo and everyone's like, please just get hit. <laughs> we Wait, have fun again. <laughs> and I just like scrubs. <laughs> you don't think so? I'm not gonna get hit. What do you think I'm dumb? <laughs> no, and I th I thought it was funny because even in school what they would do is they would bring people back in and they would have people line you from the sides and behind just because it would take forever. <laughs> and they still couldn't get me and then I'd be bored and everything. Okay. We're we're done. <laughs> one time one time in high school um we were play uh we we were setting up for like um i think it was handball um and uh and they had like a bunch of the uh before the pe classes started uh and the teacher got there um because you, you know you have like five minutes to get changed and then go into the hall and they had all the all the balls like um laid out and and a bunch of us like couldn't fucking resist and uh, and picked up the balls and started like throwing them, and uh, and then the teacher comes in and he's not happy because you know <laughs> I don't know he must have been dare you do exercise <laughs> yeah he was he was he must have been in a bad mood that you know we were like you know pissing about with the equipment before the class had begun and then like but I was the only one that he caught so what oh. he did. Was, when everybody got there, he 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 told me to he told me to stand at the upper corner of the hall, and then he got everybody else to line up, facing like about like two meters away. Dude, from the this hall. is torture! What the hell? Wow, <laughs> stop! I know yeah, where this is going. <laughs> about two meters from the back wall, he got everybody to line up, and they all had a ball, and he said, "Okay, like you've got to run from that wall." All the way to the firewall, and everybody gets to throw a ball at you, and and I and I did it, and not one of them hit me. Oh yeah, I was God. just gonna, I was just gonna say like, oh yeah. Then the teacher starts hearing like, ding, 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 because <laughs> you're just like ultra instincting that bitch. Yeah, he starts hearing boss music. <laughs> it's just like, oh no, I know, but the frames. Hell yeah, dude. You were rolling. You're just like, you'll never hit me, dude. I'm a Dark Souls master. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, so that's messed up. I know. It's just like <laughs> the moment you started into that, I'm like, this is some like Netflix series, everyone in the school is an asshole kind of like situation. <laughs> it's kind of like Hunger Games where it's like, I don't want to play. And they're like, too bad. It's for my amusement. <laughs> like, oh, no. And then Fox is like, I do not volunteer. Is as anything it is is tribute to play no <laughs> it's like one of those things that like when you're in the moment you know you feel bad that it's happening like you know you 
you feel like a kid that's in trouble and then like afterwards everybody laughs about it and you think oh yeah that was completely fine and it's only years later when you're retelling the story but you realize that was actually quite abusive <laughs> yeah that was like, not fine at all what the hell <laughs> yeah mr pe teacher man needs to chill <laughs> how dare you show optimism don't you know how hard it is to even get kids like to care or get involved but look at you going for it how dare you <laughs> But yeah, Skittle, see the, the dreams with Crow. Is that is that like where you you first started killing Crow? Yeah, just like kill it! <laughs> kill it far! Quite. And the sentiment just stayed. No, because the thing is like a bunch of Crow's initial design came from that, like oh um, you know, like the kimono esque design, like she already did have that, just except in the dream it was like more, you know, gravity defying, long flowy and nightmarish. But like the crow storm attack that she has, it's like instead of her turning into the crows like it did in the dream, because that's just like Itachi and, you know, for legal reasons, I don't want to play that. <laughs> but it's just like, oh, like what if chunks of her kimono turned into like the birds and stuff or like the eye that she had, you know? Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, she could control the... um like the cornfield too so like a bunch of the stems and stuff would like turn into arms that were trying to reach out for me oh my god that's creepy yeah so that's like where her reality distortion ability came from and i was just like oh cool so a, like a lot of crow's initial design and concept i came up with like immediately because of a nightmare <laughs> dude you just need to make that into a, a horror game you'll be the ne it will be the next slender man <laughs> like that's yeah no can you imagine like a cornfield that turns into arms that are trying to attack you <laughs> like yeah, that's that, so creepy it's just like oh that's dope as hell <laughs> i wouldn't buy it just saying <laughs> let me it's like i wouldn't buy it it's like oh yeah that's a pretty good indicator that it would that it's we're, we're on to something <laughs> i mean i would buy it for you and strap you to the chair and make sure you play it <laughs> <laughs> and film your reactions and put it onto YouTube. Let me just like, oh no! Can you imagine the the clickbaity title? My friends torture me with a game that they made. <laughs> I don't like scary games. I still love the uh, uh, the the Bioshock playthrough that you had. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> you got to the splicers, and you're like, no. Nah! <laughs> she, she got to the bit where they give you the shotgun and then like the like the first major room after we give you the shotgun it's a clear open room and the lights turn off and they're clearly <laughs> giving you an opportunity to use the shotgun and they're about to throw lots of enemies at you in an enclosed space with the lights off at close range and let me like flips when i can see the jump scare happening like already <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you know to look for it when you've played enough horror games, and then Lemmy's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. That was horrible. That was a scary game, and it wasn't supposed to be. Or like when you're in like the dentist's office or something, and then like the guy pops up behind you, and you look at the thing. That was scary too. I jumped there. I I don't know why, but like a lot of my favorite kind of horror is like suspenseful horror, not necessarily the jump scare kind. But it's just like something chasing me is always like the most stressful shit, but it's like the best kind of horror to me. Like what? Alien Isolation, I love the idea of that game just because you're like, if you make noise, if you get careless, if you just want to get the hell out and you don't care how, then you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, suspenseful horror is just kind of like it's like the better done one or like the more skillful one it takes more <laughs> skill <laughs> you're just like yo man this this is some weak shit like i, I need that i need that suspenseful horror mm, yeah I no because like, when um... i oh sorry go on no you're good what, what's up i like the ones where like they have like a really good environment where like you can just notice stuff in every room and like there's like a little story kind of that's told without actually telling it mm -hmm. i like to look around in the world you know so whenever there's a game like amnesia was really interesting i never played it but i i watched other people play it i was like oh look at that those legs in that fountain go check that out <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah and it was like, just like looking at stuff is like very interesting like how it's presented i, I think that those are more of my the ones that I, I enjoy or i will actually watch someone else play 
where I normally yeah. didn't. I liked Resident Evil 2. I know it's not like, you know, a complete horror game. It's more like a, like, it's more like a puzzle shooter with horror elements. But, like, mm -hmm. um, there, when you're, like, first, when you first go to the police station as Leon and, and you're going around, there's a part where, um, you see, like, a shot, you're going through, like, it's a dark, it's a dark hallway, it's leaking with water, all the pipes are burst, and you've only got a flashlight, and you see a shadow on the wall of, like, a policeman standing, and, and you go around, and the officer is hanging up on, from the pipe, like, there's a pipe impaled through his, his face, and he's hanging there, just, like, dangling. <laughs> and then... And when you go when you go back, um, like you, because you know Resident Evil likes to have you go back and forth in the level like several hundred times um, to complete the puzzle. Like the next time you do that route again, and you go by that hallway and you turn around, his jaw dislocates, like it snaps, and he falls, and it scares the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're just like bah! <laughs> there's no enemy it's just that like his head has like like kind of sogified and like just kind of peeled in half and he falls <laughs> and it scares the shit out of you yeah they do really good at subverting expectations because they you'll walk through certain rooms and it'll be a certain way but then after you know certain key events things yeah. would change so I, the same hallway that you've gone down 20 times now have like liquors in them or something you know and you're like ah shit yeah. that's not good i hated that with the with the the police dog kennel like because you go through it and i already hate like i'm i'm afraid of dogs in real life and i'm and <laughs> i am very very afraid of dogs in games and and like I'm walking through, and they've got the barking and the snarling and the creepy music and the tension, and the lights are off, and you've only got a flashlight, and you don't have a lot of shotgun shells that you really, really need. And... Oh, they do a really good job on that fake out because you see a shadow of one in the distance, then one jumps at you from a kennel to the right, and you're like, "Yeah, oh, and hello." <laughs> you're complete. You're actually completely safe for all that, but until you turn the power on and have to go back through the room, that's when all the dogs get out like but it's so creepy like i try to do everything everything i could before having to go through that room and i was like oh my god no yeah resident evil 3 gave me the option to dodge i feel like that killed a lot of the horror element just because i still like the game but it's just like i played dark souls so i have an affinity for dodging and like nothing could hit me anymore <laughs> yeah you it's unfair how you can dodge. You could dodge en You could dodge enemies in Resident Evil Two, like. I <laughs> yeah, before they even had the dodge mechanic, I'd like just barely w graze past their hitbox and be like, "Oh, excuse." Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just like, "Oh, excuse me, uh, coming through." Ah, safe room. <laughs> safe room. What do you mean? This isn't a safe room. It's like it's not. But I've never been hit in it. <laughs> Every room is a safe, safe room when you're. <laughs> <laughs> Every room is safe room. Safest room, comrade. This room. It could fit so much safety in it. <laughs> it's just like, this is not fair. No, like a, a movie that I watched, the Slender Man movie. Yes. My own knowledge. Yeah, my own knowledge of horror kind of ruined that movie for me because I could tell when the jump scares were. I'm like, oh, this one's, uh, you know, this one's just going to be a jump scare. This one's going to be like a fake out where it's just a person. All right, this one's a fake out, and then it's going to lead into the jump scare. So, you know, it's like, mm, then you see the person, you're like, oh, okay. And then they turn around, and Slender's like, hello, you know. So it's like, I I could just telegraph and pick out the jump scares before they even happened, and when they did, like, I felt bad because there were people in theaters jumping like, ah! And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. <laughs> no, I was bummed out because I was like, I ruined this for myself. Like, I'm I'm not even mad, you know? I think that the people that worked on the visual effects and stuff for that, like, they did a good job, but half of that budget went into ASMR tree snapping branches, you know? So it's like, oh. I feel like um, learning how to, like, write and structure stories, like, it doesn't ruin movies for me, but it does, it does mean I can read them, like, pretty quickly uh and like what's gonna happen and who's who and all that stuff like <laughs> it's still it also didn't help that like they made all of the characters unlikable 
So when they died, I was rooting for Slender Man. Go, 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 Slender Man. Yeah. Are you go. fucking my dude? No, because it's just like, no, I know that they wanted to be like, oh, Slender kills them. Let's not upset anybody by making the characters unlikable. But it's just like, if you have a sentimental attachment to the characters, it makes it harder for you when they die. Like, yeah. I think that they should have focused more on Slender's lore, make the kids try to figure out who he is. And, you know, in order to find out, they need to push themselves closer to him. Because it's kind of like he came after them which is one element of horror but when it's like you intentionally go after something dangerous that's a different kind because it's like you know it's something you shouldn't be doing so you're kind of doing it to yourself i think it's interesting to figure out what's going on with the bad guy or who he is or something just in general i like i like when people explain stuff <laughs> it's like Ooh, yeah okay. Yeah, no, because they'll be like, oh, because, you know, for example, with Slender Man, they could have found like a very, um, their approach to it was like they did a Slender Man, like, chant thing, and then it summoned him and he started picking them off one by one. So it's like, in a way, like, yeah, they did it to themselves, but it was just like, a, he's just picking them off at that point, And it was like already far enough into the movie that you're just like, yeah, okay, he's going to kill him pretty fast. I would have done it at the beginning, like they accidentally find a page or something, you know, just as an homage to the thing. Then they start learning who he is and they don't learn because of the internet. They actually don't know, you know, um, then like- No, but they wanted you to think like, they wanted you to put yourself in the movie. Like, I know who Slender Man is from the internet. <laughs> I don't know what's they, happening to me. <laughs> I know, them. but it was, it was yeah, bad. they could. <laughs> But the thing is, like, it was in, like he just comes out of nowhere. There's like no explanation on him, and he just kills unlikable kids. So they spend more of the time having those kids fight and you know not get along and do the hundred and one things you shouldn't do in horror movies, which gets on my nerves. <laughs> I'm just like, you know how much better it would be if the kids were smart, <laughs> and then Slender still beats them. No, like but that would have been more satisfying. The thing is, like, kids know nowadays, they watch horror movies at young ages. They know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do in a horror movie. So that's what it makes it, like, really unbelievable sometimes when they're doing stupid things. And you're just like, who would do that other than someone in a horror movie? No, because, for example, have... like... Are you mm -hmm. No. They should have a horror movie where, like, the kids understand all the horror tropes and actually, like, you know, when there's, like, a part where we need to split up or something, it's like, no, we shouldn't do that. Like, you know, this is what always happens. And then the, the horror movie villain has to, like, subvert expectations and, like, <laughs> kill them. And yeah, it's like, oh, no, movie. smart writing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, what were you going to say? No, because can you imagine, for example, I'll just create a scenario and it's still better than what was in that movie. So it's just like, uh, say, for example, oh, call the police. You know, that's a really obvious one. You know, it's like, oh, you, what if they do actually call the police? The police actually believes them, <laughs> you know, because it's like, oh, they had a kid go missing or something that was like their own kid. So it's like somebody that they've been looking for, you know, and then, oh, you know, he starts going after the cop instead of the kids. And then you learn what happened to his kid as he's like reminiscing over that. So, you know, like it provides foreshadowing for what's going to happen to the kids, you know, and then you see that even the cop, which is like somebody with a gun and stuff is still helpless. <laughs> or like problem. he possesses they call a cop. The cop is always dead, too. They're like, oh, the cop is useless. Or like he could possess the cop because Slender can do that. And, you know, the cop is like on the inside because you think like, oh, he's with the kids, but he's actually with Slender. <laughs> Hi, kids. It's me. Slender it's... the cop. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Good old trustworthy Sal, your best buddy, pal. <laughs> No, but don't you think that that would have been more tense because you know he's possessed and you're just like, oh, he's still with the kids. And they're like, how the hell does he always know where we are? And then they find out it's the cop and then they got to get away from the cop, too. I don't know. Sounds or good. Got that, like, more dilemma of, like, you know, did we put the cop out of the airlock? Oh, wait, that's not. That's sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> cop was acting sus. <laughs> yeah. cop, not the imposter. <laughs> It's like, oh, damn. No, because, like, Slender, Slender can have minions and, like, proxies and stuff, you know? So it's just like, oh, when you know about the lore and you take the time to learn about him, you know that that's the case. Or even better, he possesses one of the kids. <laughs> and then I feel like that would have just, like, been really good for suspense because it's like the audience knows 
um the kids don't know so it creates like dramatic irony and then it's just like oh wouldn't that be better than just like no rachel i hate you and you're a scumbag well fuck you i'm gonna go and wander off to my house going through this dangerous forest on my own alone because i'm angry at you and i'm also gonna text bradley and tell him to uh to set your teddy bear on fire and you're just like wow i don't feel bad that you i'm kind of glad you did (laughs) Is that actually like stuff from the movie or did you just make it? Well, not not a word, not, you know, note for note, but it is like, a, oh, I'm mad. I'm going to wander through a forest on my own. Why? Yeah, no. <laughs> Fuck you. That's dumb. <laughs> I bet the coronavirus would have killed them. If Slender <laughs> <I> did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Slender's like, don't look at me. I'm clean on this one. <laughs> i wear a mask and i disinfect after i kill each person (laughs) yeah he's very responsible he's he's just like "Ah, i I clean up the forest you know (laughs) that would be a a hilarious horror movie where like slenderman is actually trying to give them a vaccine to to covid and they all just die of like covid (laughs) 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 trying to like like, keep away from them He's just like, the reason I was going around your room quietly is because I didn't want you to freak out. <laughs> Can you, but, uh, no, but it's just like, you know, it, even just a situation like that, just off of the top of my mind, is just like, oh, he could have used the officer in like a possession or the kid, you know, just like one of any of the kids. They could have done anything, but they didn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, and I know that that'd be like, oh, it draws the thing away from Slender. It's like, it shows you that Slender is smart. <laughs> and wouldn't that be scarier to have a competent die. villain? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, maybe they have to kill their friend. Maybe they need to deal with that afterwards. And they're like, he wasn't your friend. He was possessed. It's like, no, you don't get it. He could do that to any of us. And then they'd be like, oh, dramatic <laughs> tension. Pum, 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 pum. And then Slender's like, hello. <laughs> Oh, and that would be a good fake out moment. You know, if you were to do a jump scare, they'd be like, he could do that to any of us. And then, you know, right as they're saying that, he's like already behind them. And it's just like, oh, that way, you know, he's like playing with them and he's taking his time because he'd be like, no, he could pick you off anytime he wanted. He just wants to mess with you first. Because can you imagine they're like having the dialogue, you know, he could mess with any of us. And, you know, it's like dark. And then he like walks back and he like bumps into him. And then he looks up and he was like already there. And then he'd be like, hi. And then they're like, bye. <laughs> like, no, I think we need to get Skittles working on some horror movies with some people. <laughs> Got some good ideas. <laughs> yeah, because it's just, it's just like, what's it lacks the dramatic tension. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that a good horror movie will have conflict, like conflict with the characters. It's not just, you know, fodder for the villain. And like a good, a really good conflict for horror movies is like give the the main character like they have to make a choice of like they have the option they have the option there to escape but they have to leave something that they like you know they have to sacrifice something to escape something that they really care about like how Mm -hmm. an an alien like ripley could have escaped but she would have had to left leave her cat and then she went back for her cat Mm mm-hmm and then I was like, no. And then going back for the cat, everyone was like, you saved that cat, Ripley. <laughs> yeah, like, that's really, really good. Yeah, no. And uh, it's like, for, it's something, because I know that they that movie had an R rating. So what you could have done is like something drug related. So maybe like, you know, the kid has hallucination issues. So nobody believes them. <laughs> or even better, they do believe them. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're just like yeah i believe you and they're supportive and they want to help him and then they actually see slender and they're like oh shit he was right but you know they're not an asshole about it they're just like yeah let's help him out and they'll be like oh it's good for him you know like it'll help him reach out and they they won't be as isolated and alone and then they see slender's like real and they're like oh shit okay. like, oh my <laughs> god you were actually telling the truth they'd be like yeah and then they're like, oh, sorry. Well, you can stop taking this medication. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's just throw that away. No, but, you know, that'd be a good, like, uh, that's playing on a trope where it's actually, like, not shaming it. But do you see, like, oh, you know, the, the kid was onto something? <laughs> yeah. Wholesome horror movie ideas. <laughs> I like how this went from, like, a, oh, let's talk about horror dreams to, like, <laughs> let's talk about the fundamentals of horror storytelling. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I'll yes, I'll tell another dream in the meantime. Full <laughs> like normal stuff. Um, when I was younger, I would have dreams about like vampires or like killers or zombies or something breaking into like a office type building mm-hmm. with floors in it, and um, I had to escape all these people without dying, and. Every single time this dream would happen, I would go into the vent, and that's how I wasn't killed because I was like a a tiny kid, and the zombies and everybody just couldn't get in the vent because they were just too big. And I was like, they're just like shit. (laughs) Like, oh thank goodness, I'm small. (laughs) I'm safe now. (laughs) It's a shame that he hasn't played Among Us because, like, then we can make hundreds of vent jokes about like. (laughs) Just Lemmy that's... was the imposter all along. <laughs> it's kind of sus, bro. <laughs> yeah, Lemmy only like the imposter and Among Us can go into vents. Oh. <laughs> only the killer. There. Yeah, I need mm. to play that. No one wants to play with me. What do you want to play? Down. I got no friends. They don't want to be my friend. Or I thought anything. you were going to be like, I have no friends, no one around. There is literally no one around me right now who is my friend. Nobody <laughs> wants to play with me. And I mean specifically right now at this given moment. Yeah, I don't like anyone here. <laughs> it's like, oh. I haven't done any coloring for this drawing. I've just been like putting in the bases and stuff and drawing the background. This, now, now y'all... Now y'all are getting a comprehensive insight into how long it takes me to sketch stuff. <laughs> well, I'm just like refining my sketch for um, for this prompt. First responder, lifeguard, or coast guard. Oh, coast guard. Yeah. Horror movie. That's different than a lifeguard. Or that, I what a horror movie! All right, uh, yeah, the li- lifeguard because Coast Guard is the person who goes around on the boat. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, oh, how did that work? Like my brain was on fire trying to figure it out. <laughs> I just imagine, like you know, you're you like roll up on shore, you just survived a zombie apocalypse, and they're like, "Do you have a permit for that zombie bite?" It's like, uh-huh. what? The, what? <laughs> oh, Get out of here! <laughs> trying to think of like other nightmares that i had but like huh i like the goofy dreams you know but those are the ones i never remember <sighs> it sucks just a heel 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 <laughs> i feel like i'm getting nowhere fast here hey oh, no. welcome Not to good. the club i'm like now that the background is roughly sketched in and the character's like kind of blocked in i'm like where do we go from here i don't know i mean this isn't really on the subject of dreams but i guess it can it kind of could be but like i i have been known to sleepwalk <laughs> and uh i've done some pretty weird things sleepwalking um like i've uh i've like I remember when I was uh, I was traveling with my sister down to London for an anime convention, and we were staying at one of her friends' house houses, and um, and I was really tired, and I went to bed early, whilst my sister and her her these were like a group of her online friends. They were all <laughs> yeah. Sorry, bless you. Thank you. They were like playing. I'm sorry, Mario it was so Kart. scary. I sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were playing Mario Kart, like in the living room, and uh, and I'd never been to this house before. And in the middle of the night, I got up uh, whilst they were playing. I uh, I stood in the in the bedroom doorway because it was like living room and, and as bedroom as attached to the living room. Um, so I stand in the doorway, and they all look at me, and my eyes are shut, and they're like. Uh, are you okay? And then I like full on sprint across the living room. Oh and my god! Two of them are lying on the on the floor because this guy, I think he, I, he was like a bachelor kind of guy. He his flat didn't have a lot of furniture, so most of them are sitting on the floor. Like two of them are lying on the floor and like on their chest kind of kind of thing. And I full on sprint across the living room. 
and jump over the two people who are lying on the ground and then i run like just straight beeline for the door and then i stand at the door and then i turn around and i walk back to the bedroom and oh my god and i have no recollection of this i was told this by my sister the next the next morning (laughs) Oh and my Fox god, that's like a like... horror movie in real life. I was I just, just imagine so I just imagine Fox, you know, you just like run to the door and stop and then you just like turn around all possessed looking, you're just like I stand at the precipice. And you're like <laughs> Hell no <laughs> I turn around and like, let's play a game. <laughs> Thank let's you for the hospitality. <laughs> they just wander back. <laughs> Bring me cheese it's or I will be the bringer of death. Catch my drift? All right, cool. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> it's so scary. Oh, my God. Those poor people. <laughs> I feel like we are never letting this person into our house ever again. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was, uh, this one, because that one was years and years ago. I was back when I was still in high school. So I was like 2011. Um but this is a this is one from more recently um this was two years ago uh which um this was when mickey came over to visit and i can't remember what it was because i was at uni at the time and i had like a pile of books for like my dissertation and stuff and my room was a mess. I had a pile of books, a pile of sketchbooks in the same pile and all that stuff. And it was kind of like leaning. And in the middle of the night, like I just like sit up in the bed and I like point at the pile. And Mickey was like, What? What is it? And I was just I was just like I I was just like mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> if I was Mickey, I would have dumped you and ran away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, wrong with this guy. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> it's just like it's gonna fall, and then I like, I it like you know snapped your fingers, and I like fell back asleep. I just fell back in the pillow and forgot I was doing anything. Cool. That's scary. That, that dissertation has like dis- disintegrated here. <laughs> yeah. The thing is it like disappeared. You know, the 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 feeling about the dissertation disappeared for like two years and now it's come back. For some... Yeah, it's like fresh with a vengeance, like, remember me, asshole. <laughs> and you're I like, think, oh no. I think it's because like the past like month I've been picking up like studying how to how to do story writing and stuff like that again, so <laughs> So I think so maybe... Le- like so maybe, learning how to write is bad for your health. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe my brain is, like, connected the two. It's just like, oh, he's learning about, like, the English language. Like, it must be because he's got a dissertation. <laughs> let, let us destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, damn. Okay. Damn, Fox. That sounds stressful, having, like, sleepwalking stuff do you do you think it is related to stress though i like, think it is it's like it's went away uh like it's it's significantly lessened it i used to do it all the time when i was growing up like before um before moving out um i think that was just because like i don't know i think i was just very stressed growing up <laughs> um but i didn't really know know it but Mm -hmm. uh but yeah i used to sleepwalk all the time and uh Mm. as many like accounts of me sleepwalking nowadays i don't i I, sometimes i have vague memories of like being up and about or or whatnot um but not as many i haven't remembered anything recently i I never, I never sleepwalked, but I did roll off of a bunk bed like a handful of times, and I always landed on my back. So I'd be like, <laughs> "Son of a bitch!" Oh my god. Okay, like a slightly off topic, but you know how, like, when you drop toast, it always falls butter side down. No. It, yeah, that's that <laughs> seems to be the trend. The gods are against me. <laughs> yeah, and you know how cats always land on their feet. Yeah. So, like, if you strap a slice of... If you of... butter a cat... <laughs> no, if you strap a, a slice of buttered toast, like, 
onto a cat's back and have the mother facing up and then you drop and then you drop a cat fox you're you're messing with forces that you can't control <laughs> yeah, can, can we create an infinite like does it just spin infinitely can we create a turbine like the world remember? isn't ready we're not ready for these answers <laughs> <laughs> oh no what have i done <laughs> the toast is like we must land but upside down and the cat's like no i must land on my feet it's like no no <laughs> uh-huh tell me more <laughs> <laughs> and how does that make you feel <laughs> it makes me feel like i should not butter my fingers before buttering the toast so I can keep a solid grip on it. <laughs> you butter your fingers so that you can, like, you pick up the toast and it's like, it butters it as you're eating it. <laughs> it double butters it. It saves time. <laughs> it makes me live better. Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> butter your butter boy. Protagonist Coon works at Walmart. <laughs> Lord. Protect. Perfect timing, Andrew. You want to finish this for me? Yes. Okay. Here, here you go. Here's, okay. here's the pen. I'm ready. All right. <laughs> it's, already, it's already on the brush. Take me. To so me hold on. I'll, I'll get out of the way. So what are we doing here? Oh, right now it's on the background layer. Oh, we're on the background. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's, we're gonna put a little... He just sneezes on the tablet, and it's perfect and beautiful <laughs> and finished. <laughs> Beautiful. I like it. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm not messing with you. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> I'll render it like I'll refine it a little bit more, but I'm keeping it. <laughs> it's beautiful. All right, have fun. This is a collaboration drawing now. <laughs> Andrew did 99% of the work. I took credit for it. That's a collaboration, right? <laughs> it's like I drew my signature on it. Wow! Sounds like a school assignment. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Let me be throwing that like <laughs> that shade, but like is also right. <laughs> yeah, there's truth in those words. Like <laughs> in like a group project setting, where like someone tries to take over the role as a leader but they clearly have no idea what the assignment is about and they just don't like know what they're talking about. So they're <laughs> taking over to make everyone fail. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, I'm going to stop you right there. You're trash. You're actually trash. <laughs> no, I did. And then the guy was like fighting me on it because he wanted to be the leader, but I just wouldn't let him ruin everyone's grade. <laughs> so we had to go up to the teacher and I'm like, tell him he's stupid because like he's not right and then she she did well in a nice way tell him that he you're a very right. stupid boy yeah and you're but wrong. I, I had to like take and shame him so i could be like can we not fail please thank you, <laughs> that, was a bad thank experience. you. that is a living nightmare <laughs> Well, especially because I was like a really quiet, uh, shy kid. So it was really hard for me to be like, no, you need to stop. But I was like, I am not getting a bad grade for you. Hmm. This is looking terrible. <laughs> That's all I'm feeling right now. I'm just like, can you believe that these things become painterly at the end of it? It's a freaking miracle. <laughs> Yeah, but you're like at the very beginning and mine's like more established, so it's more concerning. Yeah, I mean, at least there's a notable difference from start to finish on mine this time around, just because, you know, it's like, oh, when I do painterly, it's like, I paint Cynthia's back. That took an hour. <laughs> Thank y'all. That's all the time we have for today. But with this one, it was just like, oh, I have a, I have a sketch. The one downside to using an express key remote is I'm not using the keyboard, so I can't name the layers. <laughs> I mean, I usually don't organize them that well when I do name them, but it's like, there's kind of, there's a little bit of organization, not a lot, but there's a little bit. I never take naming my layers seriously. I name them, but I never name them seriously. 
<laughs> stupid thing. This one's called not the face, not the face, not the face, not the face, the face. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> it's not the face. The face is one of the not the faces. <laughs> No, but that that's all the time that that we have for today. Thank you, Lemmy and Fox, for joining me. Where can people find you? What do you want to promote? <laughs> well, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah. HTTPS forward slash forward slash YouTube dot com slash user slash Lemmy a Crescent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Damn. Fox, is there anything you want to promote? It can be your favorite tuna sandwich. It can be an excellent treat. <laughs> um, so I have this particular rock in the forest that I like to go to. So it's <laughs> the one that's right of the third mushroom. Is that the one that Slender Man protects? The mm -hmm. GPS <laughs> coordinates for that are 63 degrees west, 21 degrees north. <laughs> If you liked the video and you want to find out where to find Lemmy and Fox, I left the link to all of their stuff in the description, so that way it makes it nice and easy to find them. Also, if you like the drawing that I worked on in this video, it's a print that you can order. All of them are signed, 12 by 18. They're glorious. They're made with real, down-home, 100% paper. It's paper that's made out of real paper. The finest paper. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll link that in the description as well. Thanks for listening. And if you have anything else you want us to talk about, uh, leave it in the comments, because uh, we need something to talk about. Bye.